Hi guys and welcome to the next video in the January 2024 series. In this video we're going to be looking at paper B and activity 6 covering forms and macros. When we start this exam paper we're actually given a database file to use. You should be able to find this in your areas when you're given your logins to do the exam. Now when you get to your files for your exam you'll notice that there are two versions of the actual database file itself. Don't worry about this, they're actually the same database. It's just they're saved in two different versions which cover the two different versions of access that's available to people at schools and colleges. So once you've found the database that's going to be usable on your system, obviously select it and open. And you'll get a little message that says about this has macros blocked. Um, just click on X on this and you should be able to run it fine. We're just going to make sure that this is actually an all relationalized database and we can see there from the database relationship tool that all of the tables are actually linked. So the first step for us is that we're going to create a form. We're going to use the form wizard and we're going to choose the table of table gardener. We're interested in all the fields here so we can select the double arrows and select them over and this will put them into the selected fields area. We might need to delete some of these later on but we can come back to that. We're going to keep it on columnar in the design and the layout. And then what we're going to do is go up to where it says, what title do you want for the form? We're just going to remove the TBL and put FRM as our saving prefix. But we will also go into modifying the form's design when we go into the actual preview. Notice that we have our FRM in Gardener in the forms area. And also we have FRM Gardener inside of the form header. Now we can see that we've got some data available to us. First of all, we're just going to go around and customise the sides of our text boxes just so that they're appropriate sizes for the actual form itself. You should be able to see here that I'm just shortening the surname and the postcode areas and then I'm going to make sure that the heading of the form has an appropriate heading for something like adding a new gardener. You can lose points inside of your exam if you do not adjust these entries or these labels and leave them as default. Yeah. So go in, spend a bit of time, and just make sure that you are adjusting these so that they are appropriate for the form. And you can make sure that they're obviously customized a little bit if you wish to make them look a bit more outstanding. Other areas you might need to make sure that you're clear on is the labels for the actual detail content. For example, you might have Gardener ID, as I'm showing you here. But actually what we could do is we could remove the ID and just have Gardener. Once we're in the property sheet, we will have a number of tabs in which we can target the elements within the form and make sure that they are of an appropriate type. We can play around with the formatting of them. We can play around with the color. And we can also apply a different thing like a validation rule. We can also, as I'm doing here, lock the cells so no one is able to actually enter any value inside of these cells. So that there are only essentially a read only cell. I'm just going to go into the preview and notice this that I cannot change that gardener ID now. But here we can see the new option if we go all the way to the end of the cycling of the actual records. We want to make it that when we load up that form, it's automatically on the new. So you need to click on the intersection between the two rulers and you'll see that you actually have the property sheet to customize the form itself. If we scroll down on the form when we've got the all tab, selected you'll notice that there is an option for data entry and it's set to no we need to change that to yes what that will do is it should when we run this form now only have it in a data entry state that will remove us from having the ability to see what records are already in the table but we're not quite finished here we obviously need to add a few more pieces of information and customization to this form so back into design view we go now in our exam paper, it asks us to make it that the surname cannot be left empty and that a user must put a value inside of this. Now, as we do in the tables, we can actually do in the, the form, we could apply a validation rule and some validation text. So we can actually make it so that the validation rule is it's not null and that we provide a little validation text to say that the surname is a required field um, for the actual form. This will prompt the user when we run this form that they must enter a value inside of the actual surname area. 
We can add another little label beside that and we can put the word or an asterisk of required so that the person will clearly see an early indicator that they must put value in this area. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, we can select each of the objects that we drag onto the area for detail and in the headers, and we can customize these. So we can actually go down to the color and we can change the color to red so that it really draws attention to that part of the field. And also we can change its size and we can change its font if we wanted to. So here I'm just going to change the color to be of a red. So by clicking on the four color, we'll get an option. If we click on the little arrows, we can get the color palette. And I'm just going to choose a normal red here so that it stands out. Now notice that when we did the form earlier on, we actually included the skill level expert ID and guard the type ID. But what we're going to do is we're going to use a actual drop down box or a combo box and we're going to choose to type in the values that we want for the skills level. Inside of our exam paper, we're actually given a little bit of a crib sheet to the fact that there are so many skill levels available. And we can actually choose where these values from this Dropbox are going to be stored when we select them. And we're going to supply it into the skills level field. We're going to give a name of CMB skills level. This is actually supposed to be CBO and a bit of an oversight on my behalf here. But we're just going to continue on as we have done. And as you can see, the field for the properties, that we've got the row source being 1 through to 5, and the row source type of being a value list. Now we're going to move on to the expert ID. Again, we're going to go up to the controls area. We're going to use a combo box. Once we drag it out, it'll put us into the combo box control. And this time, instead of going for, I want to type in, I want to use a table. So I'm going to choose the expert table, click next, and I'm going to get the expert ID and the surname. Click on next, move through, and you can see that we're hiding the key column, which is the first column that I chose. And we're only displaying the expert's name. We want to store the value in the field, and then here we're going to store it into the expert ID. Just because we're hiding the actual first field inside of this drop down box, the ID is still attached, so it will provide the ID into that field area. We're going to put CBO, as I said earlier on, with combo, and then this time it's going to be expert. Once we've done that, we're going to click on finish. And then we're going to move on to the final one, which is going to be for the garden type ID. And again, we're going to use a combo box here, which is going to drag that out. And again, we're going to use values from another field. We're going to go to the garden type. We're going to bring over both values by clicking on double arrows. And you can see here the first key is hidden, but we've got our garden type. We're going to store the value into the garden type ID. Click on next. Give it an appropriate name, CBO garden type. And we're going to click on finish. Just going to change the CBO labels here. Just going to get rid of those so they're appropriate. And I'm going to put space in for skill level and garden type. So I'm just going to run this now and see what it looks like. On the drop downs, we can see, yep, we've got our one through to five. We've got our expert IDs and we've got our garden type as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go and try this out. So we're going to put a surname in. And I'm going to put in Smith, I'm going to put an address in, and then I'm going to do a simple postcode. And now I'm going to choose the options from our skills level, our expert ID, and our guard type. So notice we have our input of our information of our new gardener, but how do we save this? How does it get committed to our database? We need to apply and add another button. So we're going to jump back into the design view. And we're going to drag it down a little bit, the detail area, and we're going to go up to our controls and we're going to choose to add the button. Now, automatically, the button will put us into a command button wizard. And uh, we can choose lots of options, but I'm going to choose cancel this because I want to put my own options in. This is where our macro is going to come in. If we right click and go on to build event and then choose macro builder, it will put us into a macro builder window. Here we can choose a few different options. And what we're going to do is we're going to build this macro to look at all of the field areas inside of the form 
just to make sure that everything is there. So we're going to use an if statement, very similar to how we do in our programming. So if is null, so we're going to say what field is null. So in here, we're going to put a bracket and then we put a square bracket and we start to target the objects inside. So surname. So if surname, and we're going to close our bracket there, and then we're going to add a condition and we're going to put a message box and then we're going to say that the surname is a required field. We're going to leave the bleep to yes, the command type to be none, and we could put a title in there to say um, error. And we're going to add an else if, and then we're going to say, well, if it's fine, we're going to move on to the else if and look at the next area of our form. And we're going to choose the option for our square bracket, skills level. And if that is less than one and or greater than five, so our skill level in square brackets, if it's less than one or a square skill level in Skyler square brackets is greater than five, then we're going to do another action and we're going to put another message box and we're going to put in a, a message to the user to say skill level or skills level must be between one and five inclusive we're going to leave the bleep to yes the message type to be none and then we're going to go and add our next bit which is going to be another else statement and from the drop down box we're going to choose the option for run menu command and the menu command that we're going to choose from the drop down option is going to be save record We're not quite finished here. What we want to do is once we've saved that record, we want to put a message box to say to the user that that record has in fact been saved. So we're going to go in the message area and we're going to say gardener's details have been saved. Once we've put that message in, we're going to add another action and we want to just move the form back into a data entry state. So what we go on to is go back to or go to record and then we choose the record option to new. Once we've done that, we're just going to save it and then close. What we'll do is we'll do a dry run on this. So we'll go back to the normal form view. And you can see we're in our data entry state. We're going to add some details. So I'll put in this instance, Smithson will give an address and a postcode and we'll choose an appropriate skill level, an expert, and then finally a garden type. But obviously we want to check that this is working. So we'll go back up to the surname and we will take the surname out to see if we're getting prompted to add that as a required field. So if I click on save, we can see, yep, this surname is a required field. Now this shows to me that our validation text that we put on earlier on is working. And we're going to change the skill level to be eight. And we can see that there's a different type of message box to the one we had before that's saying that it must be within one to five inclusive. And then we put that back to how it should be. And we can see that the gardener's details have been saved properly. So actually what we can do, if we go back into the form view or the design view for the form, we don't necessarily need that validation rule that we put into a property sheet earlier on. We can get rid of this now by deleting it. However, it is well worth noticing that you can actually apply the validation rule inside of this area. So we're just going to try the macro to make sure that the macro version works. Take the surname out and yep, we can see that the required surname is filled. We're going to paste that back in and then we'll save and we can see yes, it's saved the details of that record successfully. So last but not least, we're going to save and that completes the first part of our forms for paper B.